Joey there from Kabul, Afghanistan. So the House will convene in less than two hours with the debt ceiling crisis coming to a head. For an inside look now at today's debate, I'm joined live by Republican Congressman Michael Grimm of New York. Congressman Grimm is a member of the Financial Services Committee and a frequent guest on our broadcast. Good morning to you. Good morning. You know, before I get to uh, questions we prepared for you, I want to have you react to what Atia Bawi was just telling us there from Afghanistan, that you have American servicemen and women over there who are concerned because of what's happening on the hill there behind you, that they're not going to get paid. How wrong is that? It's, it's beyond wrong. I mean, it's reprehensible. And, and that's why you know, there's a part of me that just can't believe what's happening here in Washington. And it's, and it's a debate between, you know, uh, Washington as usual, which means just raise the debt ceiling. Don't worry about the underlying problem. Don't worry about the debt. Let's just raise the debt ceiling. We'll talk about that other stuff later. You know, if you, if you look at the, the chain of events, the president and Harry Reid can say whatever they want. The American people are going to look at these events as they were. Back in February, the president put his plan on the table. We saw his plan with his budget. It was voted down in the by, in his Senate that he controls, 97 to 0, because all it did was raise taxes and increase the debt. It proves that he was never serious about, uh, about getting this debt under control. Then, since then, the House has acted twice. We passed Paul Ryan's budget, we passed cut, cap, and balance, and now again, last night, we passed something else. And, and for the record, that's something else that we passed last night. Mm -hmm. Harry Reid had a lot of input into that 12 member so, congressional panel. That was his idea with yeah. McConnell. So, so this, is, this the, is the compromise. These, these two, that Boehner and Reid did a lot of negotiating yes. on this bill. That's right. And that's why he's not being honest when he says that we don't want to negotiate. The truth is, um, Harry Reid agreed to that plan until the President of the United States, President Obama, called him and said, absolutely not. And that's when Reid came up with that other um, plan that he's going to propose. W let's look at that plan. You know what that plan cuts? It cuts monies that we never ex intended to ex expend on the drawdown in the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. That's not a cut. It's more of kabuki theater or more of these budgetary tricks that the American people are disgusted with. And that's the reason we're in this problem in the first place. Well, it's then, about debt. That's the problem. Can I ask you then, in terms sure. of what's going on behind the scenes, if, you, if you're accurate in telling us that you've got Harry Reid and John Boehner talking about things, the two of these men, these, these leaders from you know, opposite parties agreeing to things, then you have another player with the president coming in. I mean, how well, much is that the reality of what's going on there as opposed to just people coming out as seemingly intractable? I mean, is there compromise in good faith going on anywhere? Well, I think there was up until Harry Reid told the president that he made a deal and the president put an end to it. And that's why Mitch McConnell now doesn't want to deal with Harry Reid because he's not a man of his word. How can you negotiate in good faith, go to the table, do whatever you have to do, come to a deal, shake hands, walk away, and then five minutes later because the president called to oh, deals off the table. That's not what the American people expect. They do expect bipartisan uh, efforts here. And John Boehner has done everything he possibly can to, to get a compromise. And for the record, it was, I remember being a brand new freshman, just sworn in, when John Boehner held a meeting and said, we're going to deal with the debt problem now so that we're not down to the wire mm -hmm. and seniors are worried about getting their so so social security and the troops are worried about getting their military pay. That's what we tried to avoid the whole way. And let me, let me ask you, since the budget, hmm. what has the president well, put on the table? And since today, what has Harry Reid put on the table? They have done nothing. It's the president and Harry Reid that are standing in between this and the American people and raising this debt ceiling. Well, you, I'm sure you've heard it said, the road to you know where is paved with the good intentions of men. But I want to ask you very quickly, in a, April, the New York Post quoted you as having said that it was simply not an option to raise the federal debt limit, and now we know that you did indeed, indeed vote in favor of John Boehner's debt plan. What changed for you? Well, that's a half a quote. I said it's okay. simply not an option to raise the debt ceiling unless we have real cuts in systemic reform. So they like to do that, cut off the half part, which is very important. They had, it was a two-pronged test for me. Do we have substantial cuts and do we have realistic reform? Why? Because I said from the beginning, the problem is not the debt ceiling. The problem is the underlying debt. If we don't have a real long-term tangible solution to dealing with our debt, then there's no question that the rating agencies are going to downgrade our AAA rating. That is catastrophic for our economy.
economy. That needed to be avoided, and that's why I said I would not vote to raise the debt ceiling unless we had a tangible plan that had real cuts and systemic reforms. I held to that. I wanted more in John Blaney's plan. It certainly wasn't perfect, but, I, but with this president and this Senate, I figured that's all we're going to get to avoid default. But this president and this, and this uh, Senate is not serious about cutting at all. They want a blank check. They want to get through the 2012 elections because that's all they care about. And the debt is really something that's, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that another day. You know, politics is, as usual, Washington as usual. Let's deal with the real problems some other time in another Congress. Let's just do what we have to do to get reelected. And that's well, not an option for the House Republicans. Well, I'm just going to say in all fairness, there are many who would suggest uh, GOPers are trying to get reelected in their districts as well. But we will leave it there. I do appreciate this candid conversation, Republican Congressman Michael Grimm of New York. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to get the Democrat side of the debate when Congresswoman and DNC Chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz joins.